Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, life coach, leadership coach, health coach, and motivational speaker. Welcome to another episode, Life's a Shuffle. So today is, of course, Freestyle Thursday. So we're going to catch up. Gloria and I talk about the week because so many things can happen in just one week that you just don't know what to do. So Gloria, what's new for you this week? Um... What's new for me? There's there's a couple of things, but before I get to that, um, I actually I wanted to thank you. Um, and thank me. What did I do? Yes, so thank you for joining in on my class um, that one time with. Um, do you remember? <laughs> now you got to refresh my mind. Are you kidding? <laughs> it hasn't been that long. I wanted to thank you for popping into our class, to my class. The, the oh, class. your class? Yes, <laughs> at school. Okay, so you got to remember, <laughs> I'm all about specific context. If you said, hey, thanks for showing up in my school via Zoom. Ah, I know what it is. Your class, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, what class are you talking about? <laughs> Come on, give mm-hmm. me more detail and just throwing something out there. Yes. I was going to say short-term memory already. <laughs> uh, you didn't give me no detail. You just gave me, a, a, well, I'm in my class. What class? Meditation, um, Haley's class. You got all these things you're doing. You got to be more specific with me. I need details. Some of the things are going through my it. mind. I get it. But anyway, yeah. yes, I wanted to thank you for that. Um, the kids enjoyed having you and, uh, you know, just sharing information. And I know that there's a couple of them that really benefited um, with the information that you shared. What? Well, no one told me they benefited. So what was the benefit? I think it was just, you know, they were asking you some really good questions and um, the answers that you had given them kind of just opened up and, you know, it was like an eye opening for a couple of them. Okay. It, what was the impact? Was it immediate or I like to have more detail. Was it immediate? Was it, it gave them more things to think about? Or were they now more confident? I, I believe the impact was immediate okay. because when you were talking to the class, um, and I was watching them while you were talking. I was looking at their reaction. And I could tell that, especially with some of them who are not as open, um, there are certain things that you might have said that kind of just hit them or it triggered them. And I, I could see that if some of them were looking down listening, I, I see their head go, head up, open their, their eyes was open bigger. And I could tell that, you know, it, it triggered something and they were relating to it. I love that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so. it, it's funny how, you know, as I go through this world and I keep thinking, t- saying to myself is I want to make an impact. And um, obviously I want to make a greater, bigger impact like, like a Tony Robinson or someone out there that's Les Brown. That's, you know, Gary Vinichuk, some people that are huge, but, Really, it starts in the groundwork, right? If I want to build a big house, I got to first lay the great foundation. So these podcasts, my live Facebook videos, my blogs, everything is the foundation to the bigger objective, right? Because it's really great to see our youth. There's so much going on right now with distance learning, shelter in place, COVID. Um, you know, a lot of people are becoming down with anxiety issues, PTSD. They just have all sorts of things are happening to them. Um, and now because it, that social interaction is taken away mm-hmm. and knowing that I'm helping our youth, even though it's virtual, they still, I was able to impact them. So it tells me again, it's another old saying goes another feather in my cap, right? Meaning that I'm on the right track to what I want to do ultimately, which is, you know, become a motivational speaker, full time, full time life coach, and really help people out there because it's really the mindset that we have. We speak our mind and our ego and our consciousness that controls what we see in life. But all we do is bring a little awareness to something. It can make all the difference in how we show up every day. It can make a difference in our self-esteem. It makes a difference in our confidence. And that's the biggest thing is how we show up every day because that is always a choice. Exactly. Yep. And and that was, you know, one of the the biggest reasons why I wanted to bring you in is um, for them to finally have a face of that voice that they hear. A lot of them are big supporters. Um, They listen to our podcast and, you know, we talk about it sometimes. Um, Some of them would kind of just bring it up to me and they follow me on social media. So I know that what I put out there to motivate and inspire um, 
just it helps them in some ways where they think of as young as they are life sometimes is so much more better than what they think it is if that makes sense and you know so <laughs> anyway and and with the podcast um it gets brought up sometimes and i figure well let me bring ron into our class let me surprise them you know and so they were they were kind of in shock they were they got really shy as you notice they were quiet in the beginning but before mm -hmm. i brought you in they were just like what do we say do we act ourselves how do we act and i was like oh my god just just act yourself just be normal you know and but no questions about me because i know that a lot of them the first thing they would do is ask you questions about me but i told them no nope, don't ask any questions about me because it's not about me and i wanted to bring you in so that any questions that they may have of anything and i told them it could be about fitness and it could be anything with you know just life in general um they can ask you because some of them may not be comfortable asking me or talking to me because you know they see me as a teacher at school so i thought um i thought that was very interesting and that was so cool to um to see them just really listen and um and i know and i felt it with a lot of them how you did make an impact on that day with them and it was an eye opening for a couple of them that's so great. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed it too. I want to be a guest again. Why not? Sure. Of course. I will bring you in. And I did mention that to them. They said, yes, let's have him, let's have him back in again. And I said, I will. Let's do it. So I'm always down you. for they that. Had, they had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. That's why I'm going to, I'm going to go in the game because I like uh, impacting on youth. And I remember when we did this uh, call with them, they wouldn't ask questions about you. And I was very uh, deviated, which is, mm -hmm. oh, Coach Gloria, as they call you, Coach Gloria's on, on the phone, talk to her. I'm uh, Let's talk about you, you know. And um, really what boiled down to, the biggest factor that I saw the difference is, is I asked uh, or I answered them very openly first. I was open and honest about what my thoughts are and my experience. And I asked, they asked me some very um, open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. and, I was very impressed with the questions that, yeah. that was asked. And some were afraid to ask. I'm not for sure. Then if I didn't understand the question, I asked for more detail, right? It gets them to think too. You know, instead of just asking me a question, um, I think one girl, I forgot her name, but she asked me about what's my spirit animal. I said, <laughs> no, I don't know what that is, but what does that mean to you? And that was the opening the question. Well, it means this. Oh, okay. So what an animal you resonate better with? Oh, okay. God, I, if I had a choice, I'll be with a tiger or a lion. What's my response? And that would make the difference because it was, which was, oh, it's very embarrassing. I'm not for sure. It's not embarrassing. Ask because you don't know what you're going to return. And me, I didn't understand the question. So I was asked more context. What does it mean to you? Exactly. And this is what, um, exactly what I want them to know and realize that don't be afraid to ask questions. It's not going to hurt. Don't be embarrassed, you know, because a lot of the times the kids their age, teenagers, they hold back a lot because they're afraid of being judged. I mean, I don't know if you remember, I think one of them asked a question and says, I don't know if I really want to ask this question with everybody here, or I, I can't remember the exact words, but it was something like that. And I think he was, he wanted to ask a certain question, but he wasn't sure if he should ask it around, you know, in front of the classmates. And I think it was more of maybe he might be judged, but I'm glad that he did ask anyway. Because, you know, they, that's, that's what it is. A lot of the times is they have that block. And the reason why they hold a lot of things in is because of judgment. And again, it's a, today's society. That's, you know, it's all about trying to fit in. You know, I, I will start from my end and I go to the beginning. So my response to what you just said was I saw this thing called uh, Social Dilemma on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And um, man, what a machine. I mean, you think about Terminator 2 and Brides of the Machines and all this kind of crazy stuff. The machine is already here. And it, the reason why I want to say that first, I don't know if you've ever seen Social Dilemma, but if you haven't, oh. you, if you ever see it, you understand by me, machine. And there was a music song by, I think it was a corn. Um, 
Rage Against the Machine. So the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, when we talk about kiddos, the first thing they say, oh, I don't ask a question because they're afraid, afraid or fear of someone that's judging them because the fear is I don't fit in. See, and the reason why I brought up the social dilemma is in, I'm sorry for those out there that haven't seen it, but it is what it is. Watch if you want. Our life is truly subjective. Social media is truly subjective. And all of us have been a victim of social media. I remember when I first got on Facebook, uh, before Instagram was even around that time, it was 2009. And Every time I would see someone party having fun, I would get so jealous, so upset. Why is not my life to have a handsome wife, not handsome, but good looking guy, good looking girl, or you're having fun, they party, they'll try. Why is not my life? And I start realizing, wait a minute here, this stuff is controlling me. So that was the first. Second time it happened is that likes, right? So now with Instagram, fast forward, the more likes you get, the more you feel validated. So now we go through social media now, which becomes subjective that the more likes we get, the more comments we get, the more posts we make, the more we feel validated as important. But we don't get those likes, don't get those comments, we don't feel validated. So again, life is truly just subjective. And whatever true to you is true for you. But that's what comes down to our kiddos, right? Mm -hmm. Is that they live the life that they're fearful of being judged and they're fearful of not being accepted. They're fearful of not fitting in with the norm. And that that's there is no norm. Okay, let's let's just face face reality. Normal does not exist. Normal exists whatever context or opinion you give towards ever normal for you. Universally, normal does not exist. Okay, so what happens with our kiddos is that they always want to be normal or be okay or not be not to fit in because as human natures, we don't want to not we do not. Sorry, we want to identify with something or someone. When I grew up as a kid, I don't care if it's 2020 or in the 90s when I grew up, I faced the same kind of dilemma. I didn't fit in. And I realized up from when I could remember, kid, up until my early 20s and 30s, I always was so vigorously trying to fit in to whatever the norm is. And over time, I realized this. It wasn't working. When I step myself back, not the norm does not have to be just appearance. It doesn't have to be your language, who you hang around with, kind of car you drive, how much money I bank, what education you have. Okay, normal can be just the clothes. The clothes that I wore didn't resonate with me at all. It's just in, no matter how hard I try to wear these baggy pants, these baggy shirts, they never fit in with me. When I start really dressing like business clothes, suits, ties, and, and button up shirts and polo shirts and, and slacks. I really felt damn well because I finally was able to come into my own by just doing that. And that's how simple things can be. But it boils down to another factor is self-confidence. If they're confident enough of who they were, self-esteem, they wouldn't be worried about judgment. Mm -hmm. But most of the kiddos are not because they're trying to navigate this thing with social media and, and likes and comments. And it's all subjective. You know, like if you open your social media right now, Instagram, and open mine at the same time, we could be in the same location, your feed would be completely different than my feed. Right. Okay. And it's like, I don't want to see all this time. Like right now, because I'm, I'm a health coach, right? If I go to my feed all and all my um, other stuff, all I see is fitness, right? And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm tired of seeing all that. Okay. <laughs> no one has a rip six pack 24 seven. Okay. <laughs> no one has this big booty 24 seven. The mm -hmm. angle, the pictures is all subjective and just get sick tired of seeing that. That doesn't motivate me anymore. I'm not excited about it. Now, when I see a great story, like this one guy called Bionic Man, he has missing legs and he's became a bodybuilder. I like stories like that because that's inspiring. Just to see every girl post a side picture of her butt on social media. Who is that helping? Who, who has that manifesting any positivity for humanity? And how is that manifesting anything that's actually going to help the next person? Because here's the thing is, we're not going to be around forever. But if we're here, we can help the next generation. If we're here, we can pass along some kind of knowledge. Showing a picture of side with your lips poked out and tongue hanging out with your booty. I mean, I don't know how that's beneficial for the grander scheme of the universe. But if it helps you get likes and that's what your business says, hey, have at it. That's what you do. But it really helps, really affects our kiddos because that's how they live their life. It's subjective. Yeah. Someone else's opinion is subjective to me. Someone else's way they view the world is subjective to me. No, there's no norm. And everybody's opinion is all truly subjective. 
probably a mouthful there, but I had to get it out. No, it's okay. And you know what? It, uh, what it is too is that because they're at an age right now where they're trying to figure out themselves still, who they are, who they really are. You know, where do they belong? And you know, we've gone through that at that age. We went through the same thing. We're still we were trying to figure out where we belong and the real us who really are. I mean, do they even really know what being authentic is? You know, and maybe they do, but, and maybe they feel that they are being authentic. But really, if you look at them from the outside, some of these kids, I know, and I could tell who they are deep down, but they show someone else outside. And what I've seen is that a lot of them are still trying to figure out who they are, where they belong. And I think that usually comes out and maybe later on when they get to high school. True. You know, but um, so, yeah. And then speaking of judgment, we were talking about judgment um, earlier and, and judging. Um, I recently met a guy randomly. I was having um, coffee and dessert with my friend. And when we were done, I was, I was passing by. Because, you know, right now out, everything is outside sitting and eating outside, right? There's this guy that's sitting with the Jay Shetty book on his table and he's having his dinner, minding his own business. And I just had to bother him. <laughs> as, <laughs> as we passed by, I was just like, oh, shoot, Jay Shetty book. I, I was... I, I swear I was walking past him and I took two steps back and I stopped. And then I started talking to him about the book and it, it was so, it was, I, I didn't know, I don't even know how to say this right now and how I felt that time. It was so exciting to actually see someone reading that same book. Um, it's, it's a really good read and it's his latest book called um, Think Like a Monk. Um, if you want to have a peace of mind and calm and, and living your life or living your purpose every day, you know, this is this is the book to read to find out what that is and how how can you think like a monk? Because that's how they think. Right. So anyways, um, I, this guy, you know, was sitting there having his dinner and I saw the book and I had to stop and I talked to him and we talked about the book and he got the book that day. And I got mine, I think the day before his, and he's asked me, have you started reading? I said, I haven't because I'm finishing another book. And he's like, I, I just got this today and look how much I've read already. He said, it's one of those books that's really hard to put down once you start reading. So, you know, it was, it was really exciting to meet someone that shares the same interest as you. And what we've also talked about in that is that the judgment, again, I've had, I've had, some people judging me by having that book. Having a book? Having the Jay Shetty book and, and wanting to read that book. The judgment was like this, okay? I was seen with that book with me or in my bag and says, you're reading that book or you're going to read that book. And then I get a certain look like, what? And I'm like, yeah, what's wrong with that? I want to read it. I'm excited, actually. I'm excited to have this copy. But I think what it was is that's not you. You know what I mean? So it's like, where did that come from? That's not you. You're not. Uh, yeah, I never used to love reading books. But I think if it's a book that I really like and that I resonate with, I get into it and I read it. Because I'm not really a reader. You know, so it's so I got that judgment. And when I was speaking with this guy, he was just like he said something like, well, you know, <laughs> he said, you know, not we, we share that information. He said not everyone will understand. And he said, so the place where we were at in that area, I'm not going to say the the name. I'm not going to say the name of that area. He said, especially here in this area. Nobody's going to be into this. You know, and I said, yeah, you're right. And what I liked about meeting a stranger is when a person 
is able to share their story, what they've gone through, and their journey. Because you're sitting there having dinner. He's like a senior engineer uh, in one of the high-tech companies around here. But you wouldn't have known what this person had gone through. So he's going through a a transition in his life right now. And I kind of felt for him, you know, like, I felt like, oh, my God, you know, it's like one of those where you really cannot judge anybody. It's not like I was judging him. You know what I mean? But I'm saying is you really cannot just judge anybody that you see out there because you don't know what that person's going through. So he's going through a change in his life right now. And um, he shared brief, uh, just some brief information about what it is, what he's gone through, and the transition right now and the changes that he's going through in his life. And I resonated with him because, you know, it was one of those where in the past couple of years, how you and I have also been going through some changes in our life. You know, you got to look at, we have a different perspective in life now. And at the same time, it's like made me think, well, shoot, I thought I have issues and I thought my issue was bad not realizing that somebody else is going through something worse than you. You know, first thing I heard in your com- uh, your statement about uh, people saying, oh, you read this book? Because here, here, here's the reality is that people form opinions about other people without actually having a conversation. They think they know you, but they really don't know you. Right? We heard that term all the time. You think you know, but you really don't know me. And we do something outside what they deem to be normal or they deem the way they view you through their own filters. Now here comes the judgment. Oh, you mean that book? Yeah, why not? Have you read a book like this before? No, I haven't. So, you know, always I flip it around. You know what? I always tell people my story. I hated reading books too. But you flip it around and says, well, I'm curious. What do you think is wrong with reading this book? And then obviously they'll say why they're curious about it. Maybe they say they don't like reading or maybe they say, well, that thing is boring. But people don't really understand reading. It's not just about um, reading, depending on the book you read. If you read nonfiction or documentaries, whatever it is, there's a lot of power in reading. There's a lot of knowledge and free knowledge in reading. Think about it. You pick up a book. book costs you 12 bucks. Do you don't know what kind of knowledge you're going to get. Jay Shetty's book, I don't know, let's say $12. After you finish reading that book, not only would you have spent less money than ever, meaning that you will have a high consciousness, which is obviously free. This take doesn't take much money to do that. You have a better awareness and you will look at life totally different. So $12 is minuscule to what amount of awareness and, and consciousness you would get out of reading that book. Yeah. I think it was about $18. So I pre-ordered it a f- months ago. And that's what I was telling this guy that I met that, you know, I had pre-ordered it and I remember pre-ordering it a couple of months ago. It's like, oh my God, I can't wait till I get it because just reading the summary about it, I really, really got excited. Like, I have to have this book because I know I would love reading something like that. And um, he said he felt like the universe was speaking to him because he was at the bookstore that day. He's just walking around and he was at the bookstore. For some reason, he's heard about it um, and he passed by it. And he was just, um, I forgot what, what else the other stories around it. And it was telling him something like, he just grabbed the book and he bought it because it, it, he felt something that I have to have this book. Something tells me I should read this book. And sure enough, he goes, okay, let me see what this is all about. And there it is. He couldn't put it down. So that same night I went home, I got so curious and I got, I was kind of excited at the same time. I started reading it and he was right. It, it's, you read it, if you can relate to it, if you resonate with it, you cannot put it down. You know, and the excitement for me was that because I was judged by wanting to read this book. And when I saw somebody that a stranger that I don't even know out in the street with a book, the same exact one, it was just laying there on the table. I got so excited. Oh my God, somebody else is reading the same thing that I am. So I, I was... I kid you not, I was super excited and that I had to like really talk to him. But of course, uh, my friend dragged me out of there and she said, I'm so sorry, my friend can talk. 
she can really talk when she gets into it. But I forgot he's eating dinner, so I had to, you know, <laughs> I had to um, let him finish his dinner. His dinner. And I think he was having beer too, and he's just like, "No, no, it's okay, it's okay." So, um, yeah, it was, it was strange, but at the same time, thinking, what a random way of meeting somebody or, or meeting people. And I, I and I like that. What I liked about the most is that he was able to open up and tell his story. And this is a story that you don't just tell any strangers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, when he opened up, of course, I had to say, yeah, I went through some changes in my life in my life too, which, you know, I understand. But it was... It was kind of like, it made me feel good. It was kind of fulfilling at that time. And I just, this is what I love about meeting people and hearing their stories. It, it makes you feel that um, you're not alone. And we hear someone else's story, meaning that, oh, I go through this rough patch. I went through this. You hear someone else's story. Oh, shit, they went through something different. I mean, by not doesn't make you feel doesn't make you feel alone. Meaning that we're all go through some unique experience in life that make us who we are today. If you ever researched or looked up karma karma yoga, most people think of this for that. Karmic yoga is not this for that. Most people think well, if you do this, you get karma back to you. Right? There's always a negative connotation about karma. Okay, so people need to do some conscious research about karma how it really works. So it really works is that everything is a process in life. And obviously, the process you went through, let's say um, you found IPEC, then you start reading books, and you found the monk book, is a process. So karma, really, karma yoga is really just a process of events. And all of us go through a process of events to make us who we are today. You, you're not Gloria, you know, because all of a sudden now you're Gloria. No, you're Gloria because the processes you've went through your life. Now, as you get older... The wants and needs, which you resonate better with, becomes so it's like a pipe. When you go through life, a pipe is huge and wide. As you get older, it becomes more narrow because you get more focused on the things you really desire and want. And you're not worried about judgment or we're not worried about confidence and self-esteem. You just do it. And that would make life more grandier because now you can say, I'm going to focus on this and just do it. We met this gentleman out there having dinner. He obviously is going through some things in his life too. Now he has the, the time to make a leap. Be it he continues what he's doing or he makes a change. And that's what makes us different is that we all go through the process and experience in life, but we hit the same kind of shelf or same kind of cliff where we got to make a, a jump, meaning that do we go back to what we know and say, well, this is what my life should be and this is the reason why this is happening and all these you know, reasons and resolutions. Or they say, you know what, out of spite of what I think I know or what I think is going to happen, I'm going to take that leap of faith. I'm going to jump over that cliff and I definitely will land on my feet. That's what comes faith. Did I lose you for a second? <laughs> you, you got me thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely true. It's, it, I, I'm just, I'm thinking here. Um, kind of spacing out a little bit because I think I'm thinking about what you just said too. I mean, everybody, everybody goes through changes, you know, changes in life. Um, and there's going to be a time where we're going to be tired sometimes of being or wanting to be somebody that we're not or tired of the life that we have at the moment. You want changes but the only way that you can make those changes and be happy is like what you said, if you take that leap, if you're willing to, but it has to come from you. And you can't really say that when I'm ready, I'll do it. Because when are you going to be ready? Yeah, what's the date and time? Tell me. Exactly. You can't set a date or a time that I'm going to be ready to move on at this age or at this time. You can't. It's, it's, yeah, I think the question is that you need to ask yourself is 
When? When are you going to be ready? If not now, when? So it, again, it comes down to you. You know, it's you just just taking the chance and taking that move and that first step. And I always say to a lot of um, my friends this and even some of my students that all it takes is that first step. If you can take that first step, you're already making your way to that changes or those changes that you want in your life. But the hardest part is that one step that you need to take. But it's all in your head too. It's all in your head. It's all in your head, yeah. We, we just talk about right now, resonating high with me. Um, as you guys do know that I'm a health coach, personal trainer, and um, I, that's what I do. That's, just, that's kind of my profession. But as time goes along, um, I'm starting it's starting to be a polar pole, not just physical, but mental, um, uh, heart, energy wise, as I want to become that full time. And I've said before on podcast, full time motivational speaker and health coach, not health coach, motivational speaker and life coach. And it now is becoming louder. I, I For example, I had a client of mine and I got a random number, random text from a number that's not saved in my phone. And obviously the client didn't identify their name, who they were. And I was like, oh, you know, glad to see you're okay. Hope everything's well with you. And she asked me how everything's well with me. I said, everything's great. And then she goes to say, what are you doing? Despite COVID, I said, well, I have a home gym. I started all this great stuff. She said, oh, good, good, good way to pivot. I have a friend that's looking for, uh, to be, looking for someone for a fitness influencer. And of a split second, I was about to text, great, let's this number, let's connect. And I stopped. And the reason why I stopped is I had to check in with myself. So as I keep talking about and become that full-time motivational speaker and life coach, all that stuff, if the more I get out there and do things that are not in line with what I want, the more I get further away from what I want. So check in what's wrong. If you become a fitness influencer, yeah, yeah, it'll promote yourself. Yeah, you'll get out there, you make it some followers or whatever. Is it really what you want? I said, no. So I didn't respond back to that. Because the thing is, is, is a fitness influencer is not what I resonate with and is not what I want for my goal. So why, here it is, universe is saying something to me or something comes in my way, I have an opportunity to pivot and say, no, I checked in with myself. So every time you want to, you want to do something, first of all, success and universe waits for nobody. That's, let's face reality. If there's a moment in time we have to make it a decision despite fear and you make the decision, the universe is there for you. If you then, a decision to be made, you get scared, don't make a decision. It's not going to wait till, well, I'm going to wait till Ron and Gloria is ready for a decision. The universe is going to sit here for success. No, it, next person. It, I can wait for you. So you got to take the opportunity when it presents itself because it won't wait for anybody. So that's why I bring the plan back to being an influencer, even though probably a great opportunity and people say, oh, this is great. But, I don't want to be known as a fitness influencer. I don't want that. So again, anytime you come to a crossroads of something that can go right, left, up, or down, check in with yourself. Ask yourself the question, what do you really want to do five years from now? If what you want to do five years from now is not resonating within in front of you, then you got to make adjustments. So when she sent me this text for a split second, oh, it'd be a great idea. Then it's like, okay, wait a minute here. Hold on. Hold on. A fitness influencer is not something all glamorous, okay? For, you, you're working for somebody. You'll be posting pictures for them. You have to sign a contract. You got to get some free gear, promote it. Okay, you're working for somebody. And that's taken away from my goal. My goal is becoming a life coach, a motivational speaker. That is the goal. So I can't do things that take away from the goal because I'm only one person. I can't multiply Ron tenfold. I got always undoubtedly check in with yourself because if you want success, you got to stay in line with the success and keep that trend. I like that. Um, I like that advice. I think um, check in with yourself because you don't want to make a decision and jump right into it because you were excited about it. And it sounds like it's a good, good opportunity, but is it really what you want? So you don't want to make a decision that you'll regret later on. Right. So check in in yourself. I like that one. That's a really good advice. Just like I said before, is that, you know, I'm going to wait till this perfect time to make something happen. Wait till this. Okay. Then when, if you, if you say it to yourself, I'm going to wait until this time. Okay. Ask yourself, when is the time and what time of day and when, if you could answer that question unequivocally by time, date and everything, 
you will, should be a billionaire because you predict everything. None of us can predict exactly the time, the date of anything in the universe. Okay. So if not now, when, if you can't answer that question, then now's the time. So I hope you guys learned something now. The two takeaways here is check it with yourself. Uh, Arnold always said, don't listen to naysayers. So don't listen to people that always want to put you down. Build your self-confidence. Build yourself in stem. Know what you want. Take the leap. Thank you always for listening to another episode of Life's A Shuffle. This is Ron Johnson, motivational speaker, health coach, and life coach, and let's live better daily. And just believe in yourself. At the end of the day, all that really matters is you, your decision. It's just you. You, you is all that matters. Again, this is Gloria, life coach. Thank you for tuning into another episode of Life's a Shuffle.